By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing on the right side with a Mahamoti ramp deck that's green and blue. And I'm playing against Menendian's blue, black, red deck. And for the ones who are not familiar, uh, Stephen Menendian is, um, I guess, a well-known EC player that went to NoobCon this year for the first time, and this is the deck that he brought with him. So I'm excited to actually play against it. And I believe I'm taking a mulligan here. And I'm going to six cards. If I keep this one, I get to scry. And I put it on the bottom, so it's not a great start for me. And my opponent here starts with a City of Brass, an important component to this deck because it plays with three colors. You could say there's a little splash of black he plays with a playset of Hypnotic Spectres. And oh, look at this explosive star there. There's a Black Lotus into a Surrender Afrit there on the battlefield, the 3-4 flyer from Arabian Nights. I'm having three mana now as well, and I'm actually also playing with a playset of Surrender Afrits, but I haven't found them yet, and I'm taking the damage here. And let's see what else uh, my opponent is going to do. And he's playing a Hypnotic Spectre here. So there's a playset of Hypnotic Spectres in here. There is a Mind Twist and a Demonic Tutor in this deck. And that's about it. And look at this play. I'm power syncing the Hippie. And I'm also unsummoning um, the Surrounded Befreed. And I wanted to say maybe that'll enable me to counter it when it comes back. But I'm not doing that. I am playing a Brain Geyser for two here. So I'm filling my hand. So you might think, why not wait uh, till later with playing the Brain Geyser? Well, I simply now have the mana and I need the cards. And he's attacking me, going down to 15. And as you can see, he now has two blue mana available and he can counter again, because this deck contains a full set of counter spells. And this is exactly the reason why I need to think here to make this play, because I know he's probably going to counter my next spell. So I'm playing a Jadum Tome, and he's playing Counterspell, at least taking two damage there from the City of Brasses. So he's down to 16, and I'm on 15. And he seems to be attacking again, I'm taking the damage, and he's playing the Surrender Befreed again. So guess who's back? Taking some damage again, being down to 14, and I, I guess... You could say that's one of the weaknesses of the deck, that you're taking a lot of damage with it. Those Surrender Befreeds, those City of Brasses, and also the uh, Psy Blasts that are in here. I'm not sure if it's a full playset, but Psy Blast, a old school card that deals 4 damage to target creature or player, but also 2 damage to yourself as well. And now he's attacking with both creatures. And I have a decision to make, because I think he's probably holding... A lightning bolt so if I tap uh, block the surrender Befreed with my 5-6 Mahamoti my Mahamoti dies and therefore I choose to block the factory but there's the side blast that I just mentioned and that deals four damage so that's exactly enough and that means I'm getting three more damage but he's also taking two damage from the side blast but my Mahamoti Jin is gone unfortunately do I have another one because I need to do something and I'm playing an unstable mutation here but he's playing a Lightning Bolt. So I want to keep on the pressure, that's why I played the Unstable Mutation. But now he's got a two for one. So he's got my Unstable Mutation gone, and he's got my uh, my Jump Blocker gone, my Birds of Paradise. So I'm going down to seven. Oh, and he's playing a Demonic Tutor. So this is probably end game. When you're playing against an opponent that plays with a play set of Lightning Bolts, plays with Psy Blasts, plays with very aggressive creatures, and I'm down on 7, and he's looking up his Ancestral Recall. Kind of your standard play, and it's a standard play for a reason, because it's a damn good play. And gets to draw 3 cards, taking more damage, going down to 6. But I mean, he's got the board. And I'm on 7, so he can deal, he can deal exactly 7 damage next turn. So this looks... Uh, this seems to be the end for me for game one, and he's attacking here. What can I do? And I'm showing him his hand here, and I had that tranquility in hand. My plan was to play out the unstable, and then when it ticked the birds down, play out the tranquility and still have my birds. That was one of my ideas, but um, didn't make it. First game is a loss. Let's go to sideboarding and see what happens in game number two. 
Before we go to game number two, let's have a quick look at this card, the blue elemental blast, and here also is the red elemental blast. And these are two cards that we'll probably see a lot in game number two, and if we have game number three in game number three, because my opponent will probably board in uh, four red elemental blasts, I will board in four blue elemental blasts, so let the blasting begin. Game number two, and let's see what I can do. At least I'm on the play. Hopefully I don't need to take a mulligan. And let's see what I can do against this uh, very powerful deck. Very quick deck, very aggressive deck. The idea of my deck is basically to, to ramp really quickly with four Lanawar Elves and four Birds of Paradise, get surrounded by Fritz and Mahamoti Jins out as soon as possible. Also Soul Ring, of course, great ramping tool. But there's a Library of Alexandria, and that's a big problem for me because I actually have no land removal in this deck. So, I mean, he can keep using this, so I have to find a way to get cards out of his hand. And I'm not drawing a land here for turn, so I have to pass turn again. This is not looking good for me. So I had this kind of nice start with the Soul Ring, but I have no follow-up play. My opponent here playing a Mox Ruby, taking a damage, playing a Hypnotic Spectre. Hopefully I can counter, and I can't. At least I can take it from him, playing a uh, Control Magic. He cannot counter, he stepped out. And this can kind of be my rescue here, also to kind of compensate for the drawing power of the library of Alexandria taking a damage from the city of brass and this is not great playing a surrender of Reed, meaning I cannot attack or do I have something else playing an unsummon so that will allow me to take a card out of his hand hopefully it's going to be that surrender of Reed. that would be great and it's actually a factory not too bad you know could be worse because then he would have two factories on the board and that could create a real uh, problem as well and there it is the surrender of Freed is back again but it was worth it because what I got for my unsummon was kind of two damage in and he had to discard a card so I think it's a good play but I'm still waiting on my green mana and I, I have nothing to do now and that's uh that's not good, because he still has his active library, and he's drawn so many more cards than I have. And he's attacking, taking the damage. I haven't taken a lot of damage. Actually, my first damage so far, so that's not too bad. But, I mean, he's definitely ahead. Tapping two mana, playing a Shatter over my Soul Ring, and will we see a... Nope. I wanted to say, will we see a blue elemental blast here? But we don't. But I think I'm still thinking. I'm kind of in a tank here. And there it is, a blue elemental blast. And luckily, the player I'm playing against, I'm playing against on I've played against him before. Um, he's very relaxed, very chilled out player. And I'm attacking again, so he has to lose another card. But he'll get the kind of get the card back again. Okay, and that's a brain geyser. That's a good that's a good sign. But he'll kind of get the card back again. Uh, because he has six in hand now, and when he plays, when he draws, he'll have seven and then activate his library and he'll go back to eight again. So even though I managed to do quite a lot of damage there with that hypnotic specter that I stole, I'm not really able to deactivate that library of Alexandria. So curious to see what he's going to do now. Tapping for four. Oh, playing a Mind Twist. That's brutal. And I'm actually countering it here with the Power Sync, so that's great, but another Counterspell. And this is great play, so that Counterspell is making sure that I have to deal with the Mind Twist. So a Mind Twist here for three, and that's actually a very good play, so not being greedy and choosing to want to discard my whole hand, but keeping two blue open to play that Counterspell. And at least the silver lining here is that his library seems to be deactivated now. So I'm taking a hippie out of his hand, which is great. He's got four cards on hand, drawing number five, so he cannot activate library. I found my mana now, so I've got green mana, so hopefully I can play something. Although my hand is almost empty because of that mind twist. 
So even though the library is finally deactivated, I'm still very much behind. And he's activating his factory. He's attacking here. And I'm wondering what to do. And I'm playing a giant grove here. Killing his factory, but still taking three here from the Ifrit. I'm hoping to kind of win the race here, because he still takes one damage each turn from the Ifrit. Unfortunately, he's playing a second Ifrit and a time walk. I wish I would have known about the uh, the fact that he had a second Surrender Ifrit in his hand. At least taking two damage, so he's down on seven. I'm on 11, but he can hit me for six now, so I'm on five. And he's playing with Psyblast, he's playing with Lightning Bolt, so is he going to end it now? <laughs> oh, this is brutal. He's actually playing a red, um, a red Elemental Blast here. And... Oh, he's returning something. He's returning his time walk, and that means victory. So that went very quickly here, but what he did, he... First played the Red Elemental Blasts, and uh, first went to combat, dealt six damage, Red Elemental Blast. And, uh, and that was game, so an easy 2-0 victory here. And uh, what a nice deck. Very cool. After these first two losses, I actually asked Anna, can we play another game? And he said, yeah, sure, that's fine. And we played, and as you can see, he already took some sideboard cards out. So he's only playing with two Red Elemental Blasts in his third game. Um, but it's nice, you know. I wanted to give it another try because I felt I was, you know, closer to at least, you know, winning one out of the three games. But, you know, I've lost the first two, so usually you stop. But I asked him, can we do a third one? And he said, yeah, it's fine. So I play a Lanower here, turn one. It's an ideal opening for me. He plays a Volcanic Island. And I play a Lanower else, followed up by a Birds of Paradise. So that's a pretty good opening for me. I'm kind of expecting a bolt on the bird. It's not happening. I'm having four mana now. And can I find a creature here? And I'm actually playing another bird. And let's see what I can do. Another island. I've got a lot of mana. But if I can't cast anything, then... What's the use of a lot of mana? Maybe I have a power sink in hand. I'm attacking him for two. And he's passing turn again. So he's not doing a lot. So he, he's probably not having the best draw. And I'm attacking again for two. He's on 15. I'm still on 20. Playing another Lanower Elf. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he's playing a Psyblast on me directly. And that's, of course, a disadvantage. With cards like Psyblast and Lightning Bolt, with this board state, you don't really want to waste that on Lanower Elves. And Birds of Paradise. Those those are useful to take out at the start of the game. But when you have so many, your opponent has so many, a Hurricane or an Earthquake would be a really good solution. And I'm thinking here, maybe I have a Giant Grove in hand. First I'm tapping, playing Control Magic, but he's playing a Counterspell. But I'm playing a Power Sync over his Counterspell, so that's nice. Some Counter Magic battles going on here. And he's taking damage from the City of Brass. And I've taken over his, his Afrit. And he is playing a Chaos Orb. And he's going to flip on the Control Magic. And it's really hard to see. There were some glitches. But he's hitting my Control Magic. So he has his creature back again. And with just the one Elf, I probably won't be dealing any damage. He's passing turn. And what can I do? I have a lot of creature power, but what I really need here is a giant growth. Since I'm attacking with three, I probably have one. And he declares blocks, play a giant growth, and the Afri dies. And he's on 10 life here, so there's a clock. He needs to do something. And when you're kind of going down in life, those surrender Afrites don't look as good anymore. Those activations of City of Brass don't look that good anymore. It's, it's quite difficult. And he didn't have the best draw here. You know, remember those early turns where he was just passing, passing turn, not really finding anything. And this can really help him. But can I counter this? It looks like I, yes, I can. I'm playing a power sink. So I'm lucky here having the power sinks on the right time. And he's taking a damage. 
Oh, of course, because he has to tap because of the power sink. And he's completely tapped out, and I'm attacking him here. And I'm playing a crumble over his mox. And I'm playing a winter orb. And this seems to be a great play. My hand is empty now. But with the winter orb, he can only untap one land at a time. And because I just crumbled his mox, I mean, he has very little mana. Unfortunately, he does find a land. It's a factory, so it's also a blocker for my Lanawar Elves. So I'm passing turn here, not doing anything. And now he already has three lands, four lands up, finding another factory. So unfortunately, my winter orb is not as effective as I hope hoped it to be. And he's on six now, and I'm on 16. And... You know, it looks like I'm winning, but am I really winning? There's an Ancestral Recall. And remember, I'm playing against a very powerful deck. And, I mean, he's down to six, but that means absolutely nothing. And he's drawing, playing a Mox Ruby. And you can see he has so many mana now. And that Winter Orb is really no problem for him anymore. So I had that window, maybe one or two turns where I could do something. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a good spell. And now I just have to wait and see what I can find. And that recall is in such a boost. And he's playing a lightning bolt here. Not sure if he's targeting me. He's actually targeting one of my elves. So I'm losing one of my Lanawar elves. And now he has three factories to block. Let's see what he's going to do. Tapping a bunch of mana and there's another mind twist. Oh goodness, can I do anything? Play a giant grove, you know, just, just because I can, you know, it's 4-4. Four, four. But that's not great. And I wish I would have used a giant grove before, or maybe the blue elemental blast before to save my Lanaware Elf. And there is a surrender of Freed. So this is great. Oh, a counter spell. Unfortunate, unfortunate. And what I find so difficult with uh, Mind Twist, and maybe you have ideas about Mind Twist yourself, because you play against it a lot, is it's only a one-off. You know, there's, there's one in the deck, so you think, I'm not going to completely play around it by just emptying my hand all the time. I'm not going to do that. He just has one, um, you know, one Mind Twist, so maybe I can counter. In the meanwhile, I'm playing a Regrowth here for two mana, playing a regrove over my Surrender Perfreed, playing out the Surrender Perfreed, hoping that he doesn't have a counter spell. But he doesn't, but he does have a side blast. The downside for him is that side blast deals two damage to him. And of course there's that active winter orb. And as you can see he has a lot of land tapped. So now it's actually holding him back again. Playing an underground sea. And this game is actually quite exciting. I mean he's on four. I'm on sixteen. I mean, he has, you know, very powerful spells, but he's on four, you know, so only a little bit of damage here is needed. There's an Hypnotic Spectre. It's passing turn. Playing a Forest. Passing here. That means that if he attacks, I have to Charm Block with my Birds of Paradise or simply discard the card in hand. I'm taking the damage, discarding an Island, don't really need an island, so it wasn't worth the chum block. Top decking another card. And passing turn. And he's attacking again, and oh, I have to discard a power sink. Maybe that was worth the chum block, though. But I don't want to sacrifice my birds because they can fly over the factories, and maybe if I get some giant growths or an unstable mutation, I can do some serious damage because he's only on four life. But I have to take into account that he's playing with lightning bolts, he's playing with side blast. So at a certain point, I will have to start blocking because if I get too close to six, I'm very vulnerable. And there it is a cockatrice. A cockatrice is a two four flying creature, and everything it blocks or gets blocked by dies. After dealing damage, I must say. But it all dies. And there's a side blast on the Cockatrice. So I like it. I mean, I'm just playing very aggressive, but only on two life. And again, he's tapping a lot of mana to do this. Only on two life. So that City of Brass, I mean, maybe you should just tuck it away in a corner. You don't want to tap the City of Brass now. And he's attacking. In this case, I'm chum blocking. And my reasoning behind that is if I... Take the full four damage, I go down to six, and I'm vulnerable to a double lightning bolt or a side blast and a lightning bolt. 
And what am I going to do? I'm tapping a lot of mana here. Is a Mahamoti Jin coming? Yes, a <laughs> Mahamoti Jin. How cool is this? And my opponent is on two life. So he has to get rid of this Mahamoti. I'm tapping a land here. Drawing for turn. And look at this. Remember, he was on, I think, six when I was on 16. And now I'm on eight and he's on two. So it's very exciting still. I only get to untap one land because of my own Winter Orb. And tapping three, playing a Surrender of Freed. Ooh, and this is starting to look very, very difficult for Anna, my opponent. And he's going to do a double block, and he has to spend a Lightning Bolt just to get rid of one Mahamoti Jin. So, I mean, that is pretty steep. And he only gets to untap one land. I still have my Surrender for free to kill him next turn. So he has to top deck something very powerful. A Psyblast. No, a Psyblast wouldn't work because then he kills himself. So what can he do? Is going through his graveyard, is there going to be a recall there? Is he going to use the recall to get the Ancestral recall back or get the Chaos Orb back? What is he going to do? Three cards in hand. Tapping, and I do see a double blue. At least it could be possible. He's going through his graveyard again. I mean, he has to make the right decision here, or he's dead. And he's playing a recall. Exactly, he's playing a recall. Of course, he's discarding his surrender of Freed, which is not very useful anymore when you're on two life. And he decides to go for the draws. He's taking a chance here. He has three new top decks, you could say. And is he finding anything that can be useful? Playing a soul ring. But that doesn't scare me. And he's passing turns. So maybe, maybe I can get the victory. I'm, I'm on seven. I'm attacking. And that's game for me. So at least I've, I've won game number three, the game that really um, didn't matter anymore. But still, it's nice to see that um, you can still win with a revised deck. Uh, it's possible. Uh, that being said, take into account that he took out the two red elemental blasts, so he only had two main deck now, because he plays two main deck, because this is the uh, uh, Menendian list, as you could see at the start of this video, and he plays two red elemental blasts main deck, which I think is a very good decision, because you know all the powerful decks have the, the blue power, and there are a lot of other blue spells, like, of course, the uh, counter spells, all types of them that you see a lot in old school. So I'm surprised that, including myself, um, that in some builds I don't play with more red elemental blasts. Well, tell me what you think of this game, what you think of both the decks. You know, obviously one of the decks is more powerful than the other, but still, you know, I always like to, to test those decks out and, and see what I can do with some revised builds, for instance, as you can see in, the, in this video with the uh, Mahamoto Ramp deck. Um, Thank you for, uh, for watching this episode. If you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on the videos that are appearing on the screen right now. Or you can take a look on the channel where we have, I think, 50 plus videos or almost 60 videos ready for you to watch all old school games. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks and see you next time. <laughs>